Hey guys, it's Mike here and welcome to another video I'm going to be bringing you here today in which we're going to be discussing a topic that I've always wanted to talk about in depth on this channel, which is what is the best training method in Dragon Ball Z and the greater Dragon Ball franchise? Because that's something that we see our characters often doing training, bring themselves to their maximum potential and going even further beyond. So join me today as somebody who is new to the channel, but you guys could definitely check him out and his stuff down below in the description description because he makes some excellent content. His name is Jax Blade. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really excited and it's been a while since we talked, so very excited even more like just to get here and talk about some DBZ gains. Yeah, absolutely. I've always wanted to talk in a video with you, especially about training, because, you know, you're the you're the anime training guy in a sense. You know, you actually oh, go out you. and you do it in real life. You do something I try. that I've always wanted to do. But, you know, uh, I you know, I'm not up to the standards of uh, Harold, for, exa for example, when it comes <laughs> to actually, you know, getting out there and uh, doing the crazy exercises. So, uh, you know, in the in the sense, I think you're the perfect person to talk about with this. And I really want to get in depth into this, because, like I said, there's a variety of different training methods and many of which you've actually tested out yourself with the real life equivalent so let's yes. get into some of those in terms of like overall like talking about each of these different training methods that we'll be bringing up and also how beneficial they actually would be not only to the characters but also to us in real life if we were to try and perform you know the version of them that wouldn't immediately kill us in the process yeah exactly we don't want to end up like we're on amazon's invincible people like that's the thing <laughs> yeah exactly just like splattered and organs all over the ground yeah everywhere. just everywhere <laughs> just like oh. yep, we step in we front all... of a train and uh, everyone on there just goes bye-bye you know <laughs> exactly oh, we have a different sort of training in mind okay yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so right. uh yeah so with that being said let's talk about like a great example with that being in the original dragon ball let's go a little bit chronologically in this because you brought up a great point when we were talking off uh, off air about master roshi's training on his island right before the 21st mm -hmm. tournament so let me pull up uh, the manga actually right now and i'm going to be showing everyone some of that in depth as we could see right here let me actually share my screen for jack's play too so he could talk he knows what i'm talking yes about. <laughs> exactly i'm excited to see it okay so in the 21st tournament and the lead up to it we saw that master roshi was using some very unique types of training methods for goku and krillin first off he was giving them these 20 kilogram shells which is approximately about 44 pounds that each of them was wearing on their backs and when they were wearing these not only that but they were running around delivering milk they were zigzagging between all these different trees, climbing upstairs, running away from dinosaurs, which unfortunately we don't have the ability to do in real life because it would be simultaneously terrifying and awesome, and also yes. <laughs> digging up fields so that people can till them. So what is the benefit that you would say in uh, real life that, that people would be able to get from wearing types of weighted clothing like this, which we often see implemented throughout the series? And in terms of the uh, kind of usefulness, how do you think it would actually be in terms of uh, the actual capabilities of this type of training. Well, first and foremost, uh, here's a great thing about like weighted train, um, weighted clothing is like it is something we can actually do in real life. So I've actually done this sort of training in real life, and the cool thing about it is you do get that like a jolt when you like um, first put it on and then you take it off, and it's just like wow, I'm moving a lot more fluidly. I'm moving so much faster. The only issue that I think with um, doing this sort of training in real life realistically is a problem that weighted clothing has that we haven't like fully mastered yet unless you want to spend like um two thousand to ten thousand dollars on a specific suit is where the weight is bouncing and when the problem is if the weight is not evenly distributed across the entire body what happens to a lot of us is even though you can get stronger and you can boost your athleticism and do all this other stuff it eventually can lead to a lot of unnecessary stress to the tendons and joints because of all the bouncy movements so for example running in a weight vest a lot of people swear by running in a weight vest the problem with it that can develop later on is a lot of like knee injuries and other injuries that can develop just from like you utilizing it because the weight vest is bouncing it's bouncing when you're like running and stuff like that and even if you're running hills and stuff like that there's been a lot of athletes and stuff like that when one of 
my uh, good friends even told me about how he used to like spam weighted clothing when he was a little kid doing martial arts and now he gets random jolts of pain because like he would oh, do yeah. the stuff like that because he was spamming it so much so that is the only thing I'd be like mm, that it'd be a bit of a hassle especially if you're like you're bending over all day too just because you don't want to give any unnecessary stress to the lower back but besides that like I love weighted clothes training for like what they're using it for like just walking around strength training like you know doing various things and it like moving around and it just like walking perspective is really good and then um a whole thing about digging with your hands, using it on the ground, that is really great at just building up your grip strength, really great at working the toughness of your hands, and really great at working the tendons in your forearms and stuff like that, which is a lot of traditional martial artists love to do this sort of stuff, where it like was able to help them punch harder, grip harder, and just do a lot more with their movements when they're they're striking and I really love that aspect. I really, really love that aspect because it's just toughening the body in that regard. Another thing I really love um, them doing is like the the running with this side. Now, not with the weight vest per se, but like the ability to just like run uh, distances because like, as you know, like a lot of fighters will do a lot of you know road work as they call it conditioning where it's like helping them build up that cardiovascular conditioning where they're able to you know have stamina for long fights and that's all they're doing is just you know they're running they're doing this for like long t periods of time they're skipping they're going upstairs they're doing all this variety of stuff to really help build up that cardiovascular endurance so that when they go over to their fight it's translating well so that they won't necessarily gas out as fast and I think that is just absolutely beautiful not to mention the fact that they're also bu building a agility just by like you know doing stuff like oh we're zigzagging oh we're skipping oh we're doing this very stuff like that all helping to increase their foot speed and all this other stuff so i think that is absolutely great like i love the turtle hermit training besides the the dinosaur thing though if you want to you can go by a junkyard and see if a dog will chase you <laughs> no i don't yeah. i don't recommend that i'm saying i don't do that all right yeah <laughs> yeah it's um it's definitely not something i'd recommend either uh personal experience aside <laughs> right yes exactly <laughs> but yeah absolutely with that you know i've trained a little bit with weight clothing in the past i got some from my great uncle used to be into physical fitness a lot back in the day and it was definitely interesting but yes that those drawbacks are something that goku and krillin didn't really seem to have to deal with uh, all the issues with their tendons it'll be interesting to see when they become old men in the story eventually if that ever happens if uh, right. they're, they're actually having the issues from that but uh, another thing is too that i wanted to bring up since we're talking about the training methods is the the fact that uh, one thing that I noticed recently when I was actually going back and uh, rereading the manga and also because of the fact that I rewatched the Karate Kid movies recently is the fact yes. that it does feel like Master Roshi and his training likely was influenced in great sense by Mr. Miyagi and the training that he did. You know, like the, the, mm -hmm. mun the mundane chores of uh, waxing the car and sanding the floor and painting the fence and how that built up those kind of movies movements and motions and muscles within Daniel-san. And as a result, mm. we end up seeing the very similar types of things where they're zigzagging between trees and delivering milk and climbing upstairs and also, you know, wearing weighted clothing. And then after that, we see they're not only able to push big boulders and stuff, which is obviously a little unrealistic for us, but also at the <laughs> same time, they're able to jump up like 50 feet in the air and all this other exactly. stuff, which, you know, as a result, it's kind of like the same thing we see in Hunter Hunter, for example, which definitely took inspiration during the uh, Zoldic uh, rescue arc. So I definitely right. think that that is something that uh, played a big part in the inspiration. Another reason why those movies and uh, you know Dragon Ball is so great as a result. Exactly. No, definitely. Like that's a beautiful. It's a beautiful melting pot of like a variety of things, and I, it's just it is one of those things that when you first get your weighted clothes and you like first take them off, it just it does feel like you can jump that high. So mentally you you're picturing yourself jumping that high even if you can't like physically do it but yeah i, I always love that aspect yeah and even if you could you'd probably shatter your your legs the exactly. you land. <laughs> once you land it's just like yeah. boom. <laughs> but oh. with that being said i do want to get into another training method which i think is also something that is somewhat similar to the weight of clothing which is with regard to gravity training and i know that for you Ooh. this is probably your favorite training in the entire franchise where we see yes. goku training under the intense gravity going from 10 times all the way up to 100 times 
times gravity during the course of that week in which he's flying to Namek and pushing yes. himself to near death time after time after time with Zenkai Boost. Now, in terms of that, I actually talked about Zenkai Boost in a video you guys could see in the top right corner and how they work, but I'm sure, Jax, you could actually talk at length about how not only the gravity train works, but how Zenkai's actually are based on kind of real world physiology and how the body is able to recover even stronger after intense workouts. Oh yeah, so definitely. So the cool thing is like technically all us humans can technically have a little mini Zenkai, but the key thing we have to worry about is our recovery process. Because when you're training, you're you're breaking yourself down, you're tearing the muscle fibers, you're giving yourself like the ability to grow. So what you do then is you take your, you know, your food, you get enough protein, you're making sure that you're eating the proper nutrients, you're getting the calories that you need per day, and then you're making sure that you're also like resting, you're recovering, you're actually recovering recuperating and your body will grow back stronger like it's getting a zenkai boost per se so it's a cool little thing i always tell to my clients there but it is a a very beautiful thing what i love the most about this because you were correct there mike like this is my favorite training scene in all of just dbz just like the fact that goku is basically in a home gym and he's like i gotta go kick some alien ass so i'ma <laughs> just do some training like all day like that that gets me so hyped like it is i watch this every time before i go to the gym like him just doing a variety of movements. The one thing I always find very funny about Dragon Ball characters is like they have like the best back and biceps, but they never do pull ups. Like the only <laughs> time they've ever done, well, they do like they'll climb like, you know, you know, stuff like Core and Tower, like they'll climb mountains and stuff like that. Yeah. But like most times you never see them just doing push ups. Always like calisthenics, like handstand push ups, push ups, or like, you know, shadow boxes and stuff like that. But like, um, how Goku trained the entire time, just like getting himself even bulkier. And like, it's a cool thing too, because like um, the artist, uh, the way that it was being drawn, like you see him gradually become more muscular in the show too. So it sort of yeah. feels like his training is actually making him more buff. And I always love that like slight progression when you watch it too. And so him just shadow boxing, him just like, you know, doing variety of things to like work himself, to get more durable, to get stronger. All of that is legit. Now, the whole thing with the gravity training, I, again, like, um, it, it's one of those things where it's just like, I always talk to people and they're like, oh man, it would be so great to actually like have gravity chambers and stuff like that. And then like, you know, the closest thing we have is like, you know, um, astronauts or like people who have to deal with g-force where they get hit by the force of like oh this is how many uh forces of gravity you are experiencing and stuff like that but it's not like necessarily something you train in like uh though there have been um astronauts who do this thing where like in space you see them like doing their like gravity like doing push-ups yeah. and stuff like that and i'm like that that is that's so hype to me is so cool but like realistically if you were training in like um say something simple like 10 times gravity like goku stuff like that like you would just be squashed like yeah. the thing that a, lo a lot of us underestimate is just like it's not just the muscles it's like your internal organs are what's going to like take the brunt of the force or it's just like okay eat let's say hypothetically even if you could like stand up and like 10 times, 20 times, all that stuff like there, your internal organs, your eyes, your brain, all that stuff is just going to be completely wrecked and you just be like dead within two minutes before starting. So, oh, yeah. uh, we're not, we haven't evolved yet to handle those type of things at that yeah, point that's, in time. That's the but. thing, like Goku in the story, he's a Saiyan. So like Saiyans right. are not only uh, being that like developed and evolved under higher gravity, but are also far more capable of adaptation than humans or really most of the different beings the story and if they can't in right. their base form they also do it through other transformations so like that's why it would be so hard for humans to go and visit certain plants not just because of like you know war of the worlds for example where right. um, they have like their different biomes that could lead to everyone dying of like you know viruses and stuff but also at the same time like if you step out onto a plant that has 10 times gravity you're dead you know like yeah you're not gonna Instantly. be able to stand up like you your brain is gonna like implode because of the gravity you know like like, because all these things are developed under that. And even the people, like you said, with the, the astronauts, when they go into space, their bodies kind of like waste away if they're not constantly doing the exercise. Sure. Like when they come back to Earth, their spine decompresses to the point where they get a little bit taller, which, you know, yeah. I'm sure is pretty and cool for sick. sure. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Like it's uh, it's tough for them. And so, you know, imagine like even like two times gravity would be really hard for a human being to endure. Exactly. So like, it would just... Um, they would have to find a way to somehow like, 
I don't know, like somehow only have the gravity influence like certain aspects of your body. But basically the Mm. closest thing we can get is like weighted clothing, which I guess would be evenly distributed through like a a kind of mesh type of suit across your entire body. But even then, you know, it's still going to weigh down on so many of the different vital components of that body that you're going to probably hurt yourself in the process. So this wouldn't really be the best out of universe in terms of training, but in universe, it does seem to help for Goku, Vegeta, and the others, especially when, when they combine it with other different aspects. Like, for example, when they go inside of the uh, hyperbolic time chamber. So let's talk a little bit about that right here, for example. We see that Vegeta and Trunks, they went inside this time chamber. And also, the same thing is the case with uh, Gohan and Goku. So Gohan and Goku, they went inside that time chamber and they came out vastly more powerful. And like you were talking about the progression of their muscles, look at Goku in the skin tight suit, you know, to yeah, quote, I, to, seriously. To quote uh, Harold, yeah. you know, look at those biceps, those triceps, those abdominals, those bleaks. The uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 it's, uh, it's incredible. You know, uh, maybe not the groin muscles, but everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Concave. <laughs> exactly. But the thing is, like, uh, he's got to be wearing a really uh, interesting cup in there or something. But, you know, the, right. fa- the fact of the matter is that... Um, When Goku and Gohan go into the time chamber, Goku explains a little bit more in depth about how it works. He says that the room is about the same size as the Earth, and he also says the temperature in the room is insane. It can go from negative 40 degrees to 120 degrees. Additionally, the air pressure is only a fourth compared to Earth's, and the gravity is about 10 times stronger, which is akin to like King Kai's plant, for example. So with that being said, what we see Goku and Gohan have some dramatic increases in terms of their strength in here some of the biggest boosts that we see in the uh just through normal training in the dragon ball z section of the story but when it actually comes to that like what would this do to a regular human even beside for the gravity itself well first off they don't have the clothing for freaking 120 or negative 40 yeah. <laughs> so like, I mean, like that is just like it, something just went negative 40 overnight like that's a pretty substantial like drop to a lot of people because the thing about like temperature because here's a beautiful thing about the human body that can actually make people proud to be human is we have a level of adaptability not as great as the Saiyans but like a gradual adaptability so for example if a temperature is like uh, cold in a place uh, if like it's just like it's going to be cold and then eventually your body will go like, oh yeah it's not as cold and then what happens is your body hits a level of homeostasis where it can be chilly but it's not as devastating as it was like two weeks ago when you were first in it like that's how your body will gradually start to adapt to it same thing with like uh, higher temperatures like of course like you know within reason and stuff like that as long as you're hydrated and you've got stuff like that your body can adapt to like hotter temperatures like very hot temperatures not necessarily 120s right away but like it will go like okay um i'm at a level of homeostasis where it's not going to be as devastating to me to do this sort of thing and then yeah. your body will adapt and so like what this is doing is helping you build mental toughness but not necessarily like um durability in a certain sense of like okay this like i mean it, it make, builds your durability for those temperatures, but not necessarily like, oh, if I hit you, it's not going to hurt any less than if you didn't go do it. The the cool thing about it is like, um, so let's talk about the air uh, consistency in there. Yeah. That is very true with like um, a lot of people. If you've ever seen people who go up to elevation and they do elevation training, that entire thing is like because the oxygen is so low, your body has to produce more red blood cells, which are full of oxygen, which lets you just have more like you're able to breathe better and you're able to have more stamina. So what they do is they'll actually go up there, train, or they'll use elevation chambers. Mm. And then what it does is it gives their body a lot more oxygen to use during their athletic bouts so you'll be having a lot more stamina when doing this sort of thing it sucks to adjust to at first because again it like it feels like I, I can barely breathe like what's going on here but when you do adjust to it your body will be like okay when I start doing other stuff I can move a lot better in this regard so that's a cool little thing about it plus like um the Saiyans and the, the 10 times gravity which is pretty much just like you know like that's just light work for like even Gohan at this point I feel like Gohan like adapted to it very fast yeah. too from his saying like after all the stuff he's been 
through. So it's like, okay, yeah, this, this, for them, the 10 times gravity wouldn't necessarily be like your power lifting. It'd be more like you're uh, doing some um, circuit training. Yeah. Like you're doing like circuits with like weights instead of like, you're like really trying to like progressively overload. It's like, okay, I'm just doing a lot of like conditioning work, a lot of strength and conditioning work in there. So that makes sense why their stamina, their conditioning, their endurance, all that stuff just like went through the roof and that's why they're able to like you know come out and be like okay i'm so much stronger now now if a human went in there i can tell you in great detail first things first you step over the edge smash your pancake you're dead doesn't matter because the yeah. 10 times gravity but <laughs> let's pretend that the, the, the gravity's normal this gravity's normal in there all right you walk in there all right so there's no gym you're just gonna have to do nothing but calisthenics the entire way this entire way when you're training uh which is you know very great very um helpful stuff for building good functional strength but like when you start to train um like and then it just randomly goes oh by the way negative 140 that's going to hit you in a way where it's like it's not going to be like i can just keep working through it it's going to be like i i'm literally i have to get the fuck out of here yeah. right now like i feel like i'm i'm gonna like i have to go to like the door like hopefully because i always wondered when he said like oh the temperature fluctuates like in that little room section was that just safe from everything like it's just like oh yeah just yeah. <laughs> wait for it to calm down <laughs> like just wait for the heat to calm down or wait for the chills to come down yeah, that's what I always assumed, you know, like that when they're in that room, like they're kind of protected because it's kind of like in the anime version, for example, when Gohan walks off the steps, like he actually kind of like drops a little bit because he hasn't right. He hasn't figured out like the gravity until like he kind of adjusts himself. And another point, too, is that when they're actually like fighting and training, you see sometimes like they're basically surrounded by fire. Obviously, right. if that was with a human, we'd be dead immediately. Same thing when like exactly. they're basically freezing in the ice that we see with like trunks and vegetables. Vegeta, you know, we would die immediately. Right. But like the thing is too, another thing to mention um, that you brought up before with regard to the training that could be maybe a little inconsistent in terms of how Toriyama conveys it is the fact mm. that the 10 times gravity, like you said, would you know, be slightly better than on Earth. But when Goku is used to like a hundred times gravity, when Vegeta is used to like five, four or five hundred times gravity, like it would be like barely anything at all to them. So like, exactly. you know, it's kind of like when we see Goku training on King Kai's planet in Dragon Ball Super, like sure, it's it's could be a little bit better than training under normal gravity on Earth probably. But, an, uh, you know, it wouldn't really be the same. It'd be, it wouldn't be like power lifting, you know, like uh, men benching your maximum to failure it'd be more like right. doing light reps until failure in that sense of building up that uh cardiovascular endurance and that kind of um like muscular endurance as well yeah, yeah absolutely so another great point that goku mentions with regard to the time chamber and when the weaknesses of it has to do with the fact that when you go inside the training you're basically when you're constantly under those those pressures even for a saiyan it's like you're stressing your body non-stop in turn you're kind of torturing yourself not even training it anymore and as a result you really need to rest and that's the reason why Goku and Gohan elect to not go back into the chamber whereas Vegeta who wanted to you know go in and basically say I'm going to take the next eight days for myself he goes back in and decides that he does in fact want to continue to train so there is something that I think we could talk about too with regard to overtraining and with the fact that exactly. Goku understands the value of rest and the value of letting his body recuperate whereas Vegeta does not and and maybe that plays a big role, too, in the reason why Goku was so far ahead of Vegeta even after his second exactly. day in the chamber. No, exactly. I, I remember I said this uh, a w long, long time ago, way before. I can. Uh, like, it's one of those hipster moments where it's like, I said this before we said this document to uh, MySpace. So there you go. But like, yeah. um, no, uh, like it is one of those situations where Vegeta, when you see him training, he is always going balls to the wall training every day like hardcore without ever giving himself a chance to rest and fully recover while goku is more relaxed he trains smarter not harder where he's like i actually know like i can go hard here I'm gonna rest and then I can get more out of my muscles when I do it and that is very very true for real life there's a lot of people out there who can actually show this where 
you do your training and if you're like fucking like stressed out consistently like you're just like i like you got cortisol pumping all through your body you're just going to be like i i you're not going to get the results that you want versus if you were like okay i'm gonna trade intensely this day and then i'm gonna rest and recuperate maybe do some light stuff then i'm gonna train again and then i'm gonna like get some rest and then i'm gonna train again and then get some rest and then like rest for a good long period of time you know, a lot of people will generally notice that they're strength increases at a much faster rate than if they're going like let's say six days a week because we as humans we have a central nervous system and the, uh, what happens with us is if we're over training that central nervous system can get fatigued and what happens when that central nervous system gets fatigued is we'll be like we'll develop things like insomnia we'll start getting injuries more often we'll start like feeling weaker with lists that we feel we should be getting stronger at there's a bunch of variety of things that happen sadly but like if you're taking the time to fully recover that is a game changer because you notice your strength go up you notice yourself going like i am pushing more weight i am noticing myself improving in all these regards and goku always had that aspect which was a cool thing of like um it felt very much, even though Roshi somewhat made them overtrain with how he did with the <laughs> 21st tournament he very much gave that in um that uh, ideology ideology of them being like hey you know train hard and then rest up and then you know this is the turtle hermit way and stuff like that and so it's a beautiful thing that Goku was able to still use that and that's why he's always so much further ahead of Vegeta who's always just constantly stressed out and he's always just trying to like I have to be stronger than Kakarot and but like he's just holding himself back by training that hard and so I, I, I love that I love that this is such a genius part on Goku's uh, perspective for why his training is so much better than Vegeta's training yeah absolutely and we see that not only with the real life applications like you were saying but also in universe because Goku stays way ahead of Vegeta and remains ahead of him for the rest of the series. You know, Veg Goku is getting the best rest possible because he was literally in heaven, you know, chilling out and doing whatever he wanted all the time and training yeah. at the same time, whereas Vegeta was With like... With other world body, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Whereas Vegeta was like, you know what? I'm just going to train myself nonstop under torturous gravity. And it's like uh, as we can even see right here, he started to actually have his own son doing this very same training. And in the end, you know, when you think about it, if Goten, for example, adapts Goku's uh, ideology and uh, and Trunks adapts Vegeta's, you know, maybe in the end we'll see Goten actually being the one who goes ahead of, of Trunks because of that mentality, right. which is kind of funny because it would be a reversal from the start. So I think that that's exactly. another reason why Vegeta at the end kind of tells Goku that he's number one, he's the best, because ultimately Vegeta realizes something, which is that Goku's mentality was always superior in that sense, and Vegeta didn't really even start to train this same way uh you know other than like you know including like the bardock special for example until he met goku so that's one great way that goku and his mentality and everything changed vegeta for the better and really everyone else around him yeah exactly facts you said it greatly there so with that being said uh, are there any other train methods you wanted to mention uh i think like one of the things that i really love about dragon balls training is it's a lot of stuff dealing with um like you always improve better if you have someone to to train with like versus yeah. like if you're just going solo because and i think like the the aspect of that that i really appreciate is like um if you've ever done like you know martial arts or mma or anything like that like you improve so much faster with a partner versus doing it all on your own which makes sense of vegeta's growth in super so much because he's training with Whis, he's training with goku he's training with beerus so he has like this net of people and you see them like pretty much neck to neck like nowadays like with how they're like training and stuff like that well but before he did everything on his own and so like i think it's absolutely beautiful because like in real life uh if you just try to be like um oh well i'm gonna pull a netero and just do ten thousand punches every single day and yeah. then like see i'm gonna be a badass and i'll be like on some john jones stuff like when i be, I was like <laughs> no 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 that's not what's gonna happen because like first off you're not learning like different movements the benefits of training with people is like you pick up like oh i i'm learning timing i'm learning distance i'm learning like oh, can I take a punch from there? Oh man, maybe I was lagging here. I didn't know that. If you're doing everything by yourself, you don't know like what your flaws are. So you can't pick up like certain things. And the beautiful thing is like Vegeta even said that in Dragon Ball Super when he was training with Goku in the hyperbolic time chamber again before they had to go to that uh, tournament they had to fight. So I love, I think that's um, a really cool thing that they do where they really show like, no, working together is always going to make you stronger than going solo. Yeah, and another, another great train method that we didn't talk about, which 
maybe the, is the most effective in-universe training would have to be off-screen training, which is definitely the best training of all. <laughs> off-screen training. Yeah. The manga writer's favorite thing. <laughs> you need somebody to get super powerful? Just have it happen off-screen. Or, or we got the dragon training. Just go. Oh, yeah. You want to be stronger? Go wish for it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, that's the easy know, super, button. Bill, you want to be as strong as freaking Zeno? Well, the super dragon balls are just where? Or where you're just like, <laughs> just go get them and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but with all that being said, when it comes to the in-universe, but especially the out-of-universe aspect, what do you think is really the best training method when it comes to the Dragon Ball Z section, really the whole Dragon Ball franchise? I think the best training, um, objectively, just like, um, like even with my own personal biases aside, it would be something along the lines of what Goku did with the gravity training. Um, no, well, actually, uh, if when you're solo by yourself and you have to, improve i think the gravity training works just because like it builds that m uh, mentality of like i have to be disciplined i have to like continually train to better myself and aim to get better day after day after day and then work myself to like accomplish those goals and like i can't count on anyone else i have to count on myself for that specific thing now this is for like by yourself if you're like by yourself like just weight training now okay. if it's more combat focused stuff i think like again the idea of Goku uh, sp sparring with people, you know, like uh, Piccolo or Gohan or anything like that, like where he's actively like going, hmm, I need to pick up on like certain telegraph movements. I need to uh, analyze and adapt. I also need to fight someone who is comparable or stronger than me to improve. And I think that's just absolutely great. Like, and, and like, again, Piccolo, we've seen how m far he's grown. He's always oh, getting yeah. stronger too. So he's always going to be someone like, you know, Goku could spar with or anything like that. And especially with Vegeta now. But like, I really love the aspect of Goku and Gohan training together because it got to a point where Goku was fighting him and Gohan was adapting and he yeah. was like, oh crap, he's stronger than me. Oh God, like I'm, I'm improving, yeah. but he, my, my boy's stronger than me. And it's just like, I think that is such a beautiful thing to just go like, okay, together we help each other get the best because like the fact that gohan like people always talk about like oh goku helped gohan get stronger as well but it's like no gohan helped goku get super yep. strong too just because he was stronger than him and they're working together so i think that's absolutely beautiful i think stuff like that um those two training scenes are the ones that always stick out to me of like how you can better yourself and then what to do to better yourself yeah i completely agree and i even talked about that in a video you guys can see in the top right where i talked about how gohan actually helped to make goku stronger during their training so many people write off Gohan. Oh, Goku held himself back, but it's like, no, right. Gohan got so strong so fast. He was pushing Goku and Goku was doing everything good to keep up. And Gohan right. actually underestimated his own strength because he was like, oh, my dad just holding back for me. No, you right. were stronger than your dad. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's crazy to think about. But yeah, that is such a fact. Like, Go Gohan helped his dad just as much as his dad helped him. And it's just like, and they both became like super badass busted afterwards. And it made a ton of sense. It's so valuable is so satisfying to see but all right guys let us know your own thoughts down below in the comments section also make sure to check out jack's blades channel in the description and the end screen that'll be popping up he's got some great videos especially with regard to training and real life bettering yourself which all of us can definitely improve on additionally make sure to leave your own thoughts down below share this video out leave a like if you like it and make sure to stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future yeah and you better subscribe